It's the holiday season. You all know exactly what that means. Gifts! So starting today, every single day till the New Year's Eve, we're gonna give away premium codes. More specifically, premium codes for 7 days of free premium. And all you have to do to get yourself into this giveaway is comment down below. That's it. Oh, worth mentioning, please also leave your in-game name in the comments so I can contact you in-game in case you're the winner. The winners will be picked 24 hours after the contest started. So let's say this video has a contest, tomorrow you will find the winners for this video and the day after you will find the winners for tomorrow video and the winners will be picked randomly using a bot. That being said, enjoy the rest of the video and Merry Christmas, you filthy animals! If you've ever wanted to play Dead Givers, you probably saw that you need a lot of mastery to do so. Level 85 is not so easily reachable, especially for a newer player. So today I'm gonna give you a low spec Dead Givers variant that might work even better than the normal one. And I'm not joking when I'm saying that, honestly, I think I like this option more than the normal Dead Givers build. That should say something about it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the build that you wanna be using. It goes like this. Stalker Hood, third spell, first passive. Assassin Jacket, third spell, first passive. Stalker Shoes, this is the first change that you will see. Usually you use Hellion Shoes. But even if you wanna play the normal version of Dead Givers with Chain Slash, I would still suggest you stick to Stalker Shoes because Hellion Shoes are very, very predictable. The damage boost might be a little bit bigger on Hellion Shoes, but the fact that they're so predictable makes them much, much worse compared to stalker shoes. And it's again, third spell, second passive this time. Dead Fort Cape, beef stew for food, you can even bring enchanted beef stew, though I would say that's a little bit overboard, especially for hunter corrupted dungeons or stalker corrupted dungeons. And poison potions, I would suggest you stick to tier 6 or maybe 4.1 if you want to go a little bit cheaper. And when it comes to the dead givers, this is the interesting part. Boom! Instead of using Chain Slash, you're using this double. And I know that some of you might say this in the comment section, so I want to clarify it now. Yes, you need this spell. For playing Dead Givers, at least this version of Dead Givers, you absolutely need this spell. Hear me out. At least from my experience, uh, and as a solo player, I'm just talking about solo play right now, like PvP in Corrupted Dungeons, because if you have a healer with you, that's a different story. But in solo PvP, Dead Givers are kind of a kiting weapon. You're not a brawler. You are absolutely not a brawler, you gotta play around your opponent, you wanna juke your opponent, you wanna trick your opponent as much as you can. Well, you cannot do that if you're staying in his face. But if you're not staying in his face with any other Q, well, you won't be able to stack up your Qs, so you won't be able to use your E effectively. So yes, even though it's a much easier spell to get compared to Chain Slash, it still requires Mastery 45 if I'm wrong. No, 40 actually. Yeah, it's still a pretty high mastery, but with the new update, you can do that quite easily by just farming open world mobs. So don't worry about it. But I'm just saying, yes, you need this Q. There's two things that you have to keep in mind whenever you're playing this build. First of all, you want to have Q stacks at all times whenever your enemy is on your screen. So like whenever you see the name tag pop on the edge of your screen, you want to start stacking. So by the time the enemy appears on your screen, you want to have at least two stacks because the perfect engage would be you having two stacks approaching the enemy and by the time you get the third stack you already E2 and continue in the direction of the E. It would look something like this. So let's say that's my enemy, I start stacking and I'm gonna show you all of this in practice, don't worry. I E, then I continue in the same direction of the E. This is very important because the E not only does damage but also makes you invisible, so it really confuses your enemy. Because, let's be real, a lot of people have lag issues in Albion Online. So whenever your enemy, especially if they don't have much experience, whenever your enemy sees you disappear on their screen and appear somewhere else, their first thought would be something like, oh, I'm lagging, or he's lagging. So this is very confusing for your enemy. That's why you don't want to E and stay close. No, E and keep going. If you want to squeeze in an auto attack as well, by all means do. That's why we have that one. And you want to do this, exactly this thing, like just Q, wait till you have like two stacks something like that approach your enemy wait till you get the three the third stack this is very important to wait then eat through continue going reset your q stacks and you just keep doing this until your enemy is like at 50 percent health now there are some variables as you will see whenever i was fighting as well one of them being the fact that your enemy might do a lot of damage to you in which case you should like absolutely should use your W and your F, they're essentially the same spell. They just have a, a longer or a lower cooldown, depending on which one you're comparing it which. You wanna use your W or your F defensively. So let's say I started stacking, that's my enemy. 
I approach him whenever I have like two stacks, he's on my screen, I'm about to get the third one, I E, then I continue with a W. If needed, you can even continue with an F2, I would strongly advise against using both of your spells, because those are the only getaways that you have. Another thing that you can do, after, like if your enemy is doing a lot of damage to you, after you did your E, you can just go invisible. Now, whenever you go invisible, you wanna make sure that you don't get out of it like that. Just wait it out. See over here how much it lasts, and whenever it's about to run out, you just E through and continue going. This is the biggest strength of the E, the fact that it looks like lag. <laughs> it's absolutely the biggest strength. Okay, so what you wanna be doing right now with your enemy at 50% health, you wanna start stacking just like usual. Like everything is a, everything in regards to the Q and the E always stays the same. Whenever you get to like two stacks approach the enemy, you wanna throw a poison right now. F, E, D, E. And also auto attack. Always auto attack. Like whenever you can, just do it. Why not? That should one shot your enemy, whatever he's using. If he's at 50% health. Now, if you if you wanna try this build, one thing that you will notice very, very, very quickly is that it's not that good for PvE. To make it better, I would strongly suggest you get either this spell or this spell. I will stick to this one because again, this is a low spec variant. Deadly swipe and the life leech pass. Then you want to switch your assassin jacket to this. If you're fighting bosses, it's a good idea to switch to inferno shield because this is useless for bosses. And when it comes to the shoes, you can either stick with this or just bring this. I would say a good rule of thumb when you're playing dead givers would be attack for 3 seconds, take a break and focus on dodging. Attack for 3 more seconds, take a break, focus on dodging. This is how you should play. Like always attack 3 seconds, take a break, focus on dodging. 3 seconds, take a break. 3 seconds, take a break. And do that until the boss dies. Because the biggest problem that you have with dead givers is the fact that you don't have a lot of HP. <laughs> the bosses can easily kill you. So just be careful with that. That being said, let me show you how this build actually does in PvP. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Okay, now, you, now you're full health. Some war gloves. Oh yeah, never fought against those. What do you do? Is the gaze a thing? Yep. And I think it's called geyser. I like the kiting of this build so much. Like this is the only kiting I really enjoy in this game. Oh, am I messing you up, Mr. Brawler Gloves? Am I messing you up big time? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. Am I really messing you up? Oh no. Oh no. No, I messed you up. That sucks, Mr. Brawler War Gloves. No, no, no. No chance! No chance! This is what I love about this build. If you do it right and you kite and you're playing against a melee player, he is dead. Alright, now, you know what? I'm engaging straight away. Not waiting a single second. I don't know what's he doing though. Probably a new player gonna kill you either way no mercy have a poison bye yeah oh it wasn't a new player apparently 